Hey guys, welcome to the last video where I show a demonstration of the, the controller that we've built so far. So uh, earlier on we, we created a context view that could act as either the server or the client. And what we need to do now is, is create, um, we'll create some scenes, which I've already gone ahead and done, uh, it's forgotten it. We're going to save a scene as we're going to create one for the client start and one for the server start. And we need to create two separate builds, um, one for the server and one for the client. But first things first, we need to go to the project settings, edit project settings, player and hit run in background. Oops. Uh, because we want to um, uh, we want to be able to run our server without having it as a focus window. And um, in our client start scene we should have is server false and in our server start scene we should have is server true. And then we'll go ahead and add this to the build settings. And we need to create two separate versions. So um, if this is the client I've already built these before, so rogue client um, will be built with the client start scene and the rogue game scene, and then uh, we'll quit this for now. And then our server is built with the uh, rogue start, which is the server start, and the rogue game scene. So we have two fresh builds. I'm going to open up the server. So that's our server, and then I'm going to open up the client. And there we go, we see, um, we see uh, one client instantiated, and um, the server is seeing the same thing as the client. We can even open up a third client. I'm running out of screen space, but there we go, and um, we're seeing uh, the third client um, replicated on the server. Uh, but one thing you'll notice is that uh, I've made a mistake here, and the if if you are one client, you don't see the other client moving. It only seems to be working between the server and the um, the clients. So uh, what we forgot to do is is allow the um, the state to replicate the transform. And uh, Bolt used to do this automatically for us, but it doesn't anymore. And the reason is that uh, it used to have it that entities could only have one, um, it could only have one transform. But now it can have an array of transforms um, that it controls. And uh, the side effect of that is that here in the player controller on attached method we need to set what transform belongs to the state transform so we set transforms to be this transform okay so what that'll do if we go ahead and um, you know just for good measure we'll compile everything I cleared it. And we'll rebuild our um, our server. And hit build. And we'll rebuild our client. And what we should see is that the transform is actually replicated properly. So we've got um, one client working correctly. And there we go. We see the transform being replicated for all the clients and the server. Um, each person has control of their own object and fully 
um, and the server has full actual final say on what those positions are. We've got our pathfinding and we've got our strange context set up. So this is a base that you could use for you know a ton of different games, whether you're making some kind of um, um, MOBA like League of Legends, uh, some um, multiplayer online battle arena, that's what they're called these days, or even um, converting this to first person, getting rid of the pathfinding and, and using WASD movement or something like an RPG game. You could use this um, as the base of any of those. So thanks for watching. I hope you had a good time and learned a lot. And leave your comments uh, below and hopefully you can tell me what cool stuff you do with this. Ciao.